Hey, what's up, guys? This is Zero for Hire. This is the Zero for Hire podcast, and I am going to talk about um, the the other secondary, like both sides, spiritual church leader post that's been going around because <clears throat> I don't like it. I feel like it's a it's a vague, veiled, bad thing, and I'm going to try to walk you through it. So. I, I might be fully wrong. I might be reading into this, and I totally acknowledge that. What I'm going to do is, I, I I found this on somebody's page. Um, it was an old pastor of a church that I used to attend. And the denomination is just leftist as all get out. As liberal as, this, as, the, as the leftists are Green Party. And so, I decided to... Um, debate on it a little bit and I was getting nowhere and I prayed about it and I chewed on it overnight and it's like I don't understand why this bothers me as much as it does but I know that the fact that it was posted two days ago was really it really spoke to me and so I'm going to read you the post and then we'll go through this and you can tell me if you think this is what I think it is I'll give you my assessment Here's here we go Post wisely over the next months. Contribute to discourse, not division. Check your facts. Resist memes and cheap digs. Create beautiful content. We can transcend the bitterness and be better even when we disagree. Now, when this was uh, posted, and it seems rather benign, I understand. When this was originally posted, I'm going to turn this air conditioner down a little bit because holy moly, it's starting to cold. I appreciate you. It's cold. Um, when this was originally posted, it was posted as in we have to tone down the. It was. Okay. It's an election season, and I knew that was the over the next few months. And it was also the day that Trump was shot or the day after Trump was shot. So I was just like, oh, that's a very peculiar timing. Now, these are people that have been pretending like they're not leftist, but Trump is a bad person. And so he can't be the nominee. And, and But none of, none of the Republicans can be. So, you know, Republicans bad, Trump bad, Trump derangement syndrome type, you know, group. And... Just having that context, it just like got under my skin. It bothered me. And keep in mind, a lot of the people in this denomination, they are leftists, far leftists. Uh, my first introduction to extreme feminism, as in like a woman making her husband carry the children around on one of those like straps, but also like wanting to breastfeed in public and be like confrontational about it, you know, <laughs> like. Like, it's bad. Uh, people used to have all these quippy sayings. They were extreme pacifists, which I don't have a problem with. But they were also, like, really confrontational about being pacifists. Which, to me, really contradicts the whole concept. And we also had, like, a church that was run by lesbian doctors. But, you know, because they're accomplished, they were allowed to do it. They wanted, in, you know put homosexuals into past pastoral positions and things like that. it's a it's a mind it's a hot mess <clears throat> and i was very serious about my christianity and studying and i was getting involved in a denomination and that's how i found out about a lot of this stuff uh the pastor that i was under was actually quite balanced and um as we started getting into the denomination like there was one year where I went to the National Conference and there was a protest and about a third of the people at the annual National Conference were wearing rainbow sashes and because they were protesting the fact that we wouldn't let homosexuals hold positions of pastoral authority. And this, uh, it was tr quite traumatizing, and you know, to me. Because I thought we were all on the same page. You know, I saw the church as like this thing that I had been searching for my whole life and we're all on the same page and we're all pursuing God and pursuing holiness. And holy crap, was I wrong. This was like another extension of political power and I was not familiar with political power. 
So when I read that, all this came flooding back. I'm going to read to you my post. Um, maybe I'll have some sort of a, um, epiphany as I'm reading it, but I don't know. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys tell me in the comments what you think here. I finally understand why this is bothering me. Why, why this was bothering me yesterday. So I broke it down into pieces. Over the next few months, okay, this is because of the election. Meaning people are going to have a heightened emotions and they're going to try to be, they're, go they're going to be acting foolishly and emotionally. But we, Christians, are the salt of the earth that rebukes emotional foolishness. Okay, the next line. Don't be divisive. Again, this is because of the, the election coming up. But Christians are intrinsically divisive. Christ talks about this in the New Testament. We are not divisive for the sake of conflict, but we're divisive for the sake of confrontation because light must confront darkness. And then, now, I totally agree with the part about cheap digs, but memes are not intrinsically evil. It says resist memes. Like jokes, like Let's Go Brandon. Like they, they had a huge problem with Let's Go Brandon. Why? Because it made President... Biden looked bad. I mean, they, that's that's really what it was. They were like, "Oh, well, it's based on a swear, but, but it's not a swear word." Yeah, but it's a euphemism. It's like we use euphemisms all the time because we don't want to swear. Yeah, but it's it's it makes Biden look bad. That's what it is. That's what they're saying. So they want us to avoid memes, and I'm like, memes are not intrinsically evil. They're actually they actually do a better job of revealing the truth than our mainstream media does. Um, and I talked about, I did a podcast about creating beautiful content, so I agree with that 100%. This last part about transcending bitterness and being better just comes across as suggesting that we ignore bad behavior and rise above it. Maybe it'll go away like a bully. And I don't think that that's true. Evil people will get upset when you don't join them in their evil, so they will persecute you. We're told that in scripture. Now on the surface it seems like very flowery. Um, but deep down it comes across as cowardly. It comes across like with the context that's coming from a lot of like spiritual leaders that are posting this. It suggests to me that they're the same people who were complicit in shutting down churches and locking us in our homes because they didn't want to stir the pot. And I think a lot of these leaders are scared and they should be scared because they sat back and they watched evil persecute half the country for four years and they did nothing about it. They didn't speak up about it. They wouldn't condemn BLM or the riots. They wouldn't condemn forcing people to get a vax, an experimental shot, or they would lose their jobs because they didn't agree with being forced to get put something in their body, all of a sudden my body, my choice doesn't mean anything anymore. These spiritual leaders just sat back and they watched mostly the people on the right, but people who just wanted to hold on to their rights and, re and retain their own sovereignty get persecuted for more than four years. And they just hoped that if they were quiet, that they would rise above it or maybe that monster would eat them last. They were cowards. They were cowardly. Meanwhile, the, like many of us who did speak up against these evils, we were persecuted for it. And those same spiritual leaders sat back and watched as we were torn apart and they did nothing to help or alleviate us. So now, a lot of these same people are coming back to morally grandstand when they should be the ones repenting and apologizing. And none of them the fact that none of them have asked for forgiveness or admitted to any wrongdoing makes the whole situation worse. And it makes people like me even angrier and it makes us feel more betrayed deep down. Looking at the temperature of this country, I guess I'm expected to be. Or I, I, I mean, looking at the temperature of this country, I guess it's to be expected. Because I, maybe I'm reading into this and this is my interpretation, but I actually prayed about it. I chewed on it. I thought about this on a deep level. 
but everybody is both sides in this conversation. Trump got shot, and so the the only thing we've heard over the next 24 hours is how right-wingers are going to retaliate. All summer long, in 2020, they burned down cities because they didn't get their way. They believe that Trump is Hitler because that's what the media has been telling them for the last eight years. He's Hitler. He's worse than Hitler. He's Mussolini. He's going to take away your rights. He's going to do these bad things. He's the end of democracy. When when James Hodgkinson went after Steve Scalise, it was because the media was saying that a hundred thousand was it ten thousand people every month were going to die because of Obama's health care being repealed because of media malpractice. When Audrey. What's her name? What's, what's her name? The, the, the transgender shooter went after those Christian kids. It was because she hated white people. She hated Christians because of what they stood for. But we're supposed to support the trans youth. And we're supposed to, and that's what the White House was fighting for. And none of these spiritual leaders spoke out against that. Spoke up, pushed back on that rhetoric. But now all of a sudden, when Trump gets shot and people are mad about it and righteously indignant about it, because they're scared that we're going to come for them. <coughs> not that we said that we have. Not that they have any real indication that anybody's coming for them. Speci- but their butts are on the line now. When it's the media, when it's the politicians, now that we're, we're rightly upset with them for turning this boiling point up so much. They're, they're saying, well, the, the right-wingers are going to retaliate. The right-wingers are going to be violent because that's what they do when they don't get their way. When literally, over the last five or six years, every case of political violence has come from the left. And these spiritual leaders will not speak up about it. And they won't condemn it and they won't say anything about it. Because they're cowards. And because they deep down they agree with it. They, they, they might not want to see it go as far as the political violence, but they're not going to lift a finger to do anything about it. And when, when a right-winger does something retarded, I'm one of the first ones in line to condemn it and to speak up against it. And there's a lot of people like us, like me, that we will condemn. And, and if, if anybody were to go after Biden or something and we found out that it was a right-winger because they were trying to avenge Trump or whatever, we would denounce him as a party. And you see, you see the infighting over the moral grandstanding in our party right now, in our in our polit- political side, because people are upset about Amber Rose because she's a whore, getting to speak at the RNC and things like that. It's not part of our religion. You don't get to morally grandstand about this stuff. It's a political party. There is no po- there's no room in this. Okay, these aren't values that we uphold, but you don't get to persecute people about their lifestyle because of politics. You don't have to agree with their lifestyle. I don't agree with their lifestyle. We're not going to get on board with their agenda. But they can vote how they want. They're not Christians, and I understand that. And we can try to reach them with for Christ, with, and that's a good way. But going after people because of their past is not a good way of doing that. I'm not saying be tolerant and, and just allow stuff. But like we can we can disagree... On policy issues and not be jerks to people and not persecute people we don't have to do that. so you see us in the party fighting against those people that are trying to do that i spoke in the last podcast about how they want to cancel jack black because he made a trump joke and plenty of right-wingers are saying that's not okay that's not right that's idiotic we don't want to cancel people so we definitely don't want to go be violent and you can say January 6th, January 6th. January 6th is the day that Ashley Babbitt died. And she got shot by, uh, by an officer. That's the only th- person that died. We were, there was a whole bunch of stuff, we, you know, Antifa in front of that. That was after the 120 days of riots that nobody condemned from the left. They were actually raising bail money to get people out of jail during that time. People were actually going after Trump support. Hey, is he a Trump supporter? And they shot that guy over, um, what was it, in California? Shot the guy in the chest and killed him because he had on a Trump hat. 
And on the other side of the country, we had the Proud Boys fighting with Antifa. And then when the Proud Boys stood their ground and Antifa ran away, the cops arrested the Proud Boys and put them in prison. Tried to get them kicked out of their bank accounts. They didn't want them to raise money. Journalists were calling the bank saying, why are you supporting the Proud Boys? It's always from the left. The persecution, the canceling, the political violence. Antifa killing that guy in front of his dad or killing that guy's dad in front of him. Like, that is political violence on, on the basis of politics and it always comes from the left. Attacking Rand, Rand Paul in his, in his own yard. It came from the left. But they want to sit here and, and tell us and morally grant say, oh, it's both sides. It's both sides. That's what I see when I see this post. And it, it like pisses me off. It's, they want to sweep it under flowery, feathery language. Check your facts, guys. Yeah, check your facts. That's fine. But, like, this is a time to, to unify, right? And most of the country is unified behind Trump. What if we told them that? What if we told them, you guys need to get, be- get behind Trump. He's going to bring this country back on track. They wouldn't like that message, but they're the first ones to say unify because what they actually mean is you, you need to back down and just get on board with their agenda. Don't be divisive. Don't stand up for what you believe in. Just like they took MSNBC off the air for a little while because they were afraid of what they might say on Morning Joe. Because these people can't be trusted to just be decent people. So, yeah. I don't buy into it. And I think that these spiritual leaders, they always punch Right. They never punch left. John Cooper's talked about this. Doug Wilson has talked about this. They never punch left. They always punch right. Even though we're not the violent ones. When you got jihadis blowing up stuff and everything, they're all like, oh, well, don't, don't, you know, like, you think like the fact that a bunch of rich white liberal women on MSNBC lectured us is the reason that we didn't go after any. No, it's because we don't think like that. We don't go after people like that. They're the ones that do it. And these spiritual leaders are on board with it. Look at how many Biden-Harris stickers they have on their bumpers. They never punch left. They always punch right. Because they're cowards. Jack Black just got a rude awakening that you can't just blindly make Trump jokes and it's okay. Because the culture is changing. Eminem had the picture of Trump on his uh, album cover, you know, the, the day that he got shot. The culture is changing. And these spiritual leaders are still trying to be partisan hacks. Because they're cowards. And you know what? In Revelation 21, 8, there's a list of people who will not inherit the kingdom of God. And the first people on that list are cowards. The first people on that list. It's cowards and then it's unbelievers. So before unbelievers are even listed, it's the cowards that are listed. And they're going to keep doing it. They're going to pro- if, if bird flu becomes a thing... And they start pushing those bird food. You got to get that shot, or you can't be a pilot, or you can't. Look at how far back our country has been uh, pushed because they fire people who don't agree with the left. That's the unity that they want you to get behind. They'll fire you if you don't believe. So now industries have been pushed back 5, 10, 20 years because they fire the people that know what they're talking about. So we got wheels and doors falling off of planes and crap. DEI hires. It's all political. It's all political with these people. And the spiritual leaders are cowards. And they're trying to make us into hyper agreeable cowards. And I won't stand for it. And and clearly the Bible won't stand for it. So now you understand why this post gets under my skin so much. And now it's your turn to respond. Let me know what you guys think. Um, These these last couple posts have been quite passionate. I understand that. Um, I'm going to have one more post this week. I'm going to answer some questions from um, people that have left good comments and, and kind of address some of those things. So this is your time. Get get your comments in, and uh, maybe Friday or Saturday I'll do a, a special episode where I answer some of the questions that have been coming in 
or comments that have been coming in through various channels on these podcasts. All right, that's it for the week. Love you guys. Bye.